Hi, today we are looking at section 7.2, which is analyzing and transforming exponential functions. So our definition for exponential function is any function of x that can be written in the form of y equals a to the power of x, where a is a positive constant. Now our graph of exponential functions will take one of two shapes. If our a value is greater than one, we're going to have what's known as an increasing graph. So our graph is going to go higher and higher as we proceed to our right side. If our a value is between zero and one, it's a decreasing graph and we go lower and lower. What you'll notice is for both of these graphs, they have a y-intercept of one because anything to the power of zero is one. Now for the domains of each of these are all real numbers for x and our range would be y has to be greater than zero. Now this will change once we start doing transformations. Okay, so our first example graph y equals one over three to the power of x and determine is for function increasing or decreasing, any intercepts, asymptotes, domain, and range. Okay, so I'll do a brief table of values for us. So we'll have x, we'll have y equals one over three to the power of x. Okay, so we substitute negative three in here. We've got one third to the power of negative three. That gives us 27. Then one third to negative two would be nine. One third to negative one is three to the power of zero is one. To the power of one is one third. To the power of two is one ninth. The power of three is one over 27. So plotting this graph, obviously a 27 is not going to fail. And so we'll start at negative 2, comma 9. So at negative 2, we're at 9. Negative 1, we're at 3. 0, we're at 1. 1, we're at 1 third. Then we're at 1 ninth. Then 1 over 27. So we can see that we have a decrease in graph, which we should expect because 1 third is between 0 and 1. So we know that it is decreasing. Intercepts, we just have a y-intercept here. So we have an intercept at y equals 1. Asymptotes, essentially we have a horizontal asymptote here. So that would be at y equals 0. Our domain, it'll continue forever this way and forever this way. So that's x is all real numbers. Range, our graph will never be a negative value. So therefore, y is greater than zero because they also can't equal zero. We're now going to add transformations to our exponential graphs. So y equals c times a to the power of d times x minus h plus k, where we have restrictions c cannot equal zero and d cannot equal zero. It modifies our graph of our original exponential function by stretching our graph vertically by a factor of c, stretching it horizontally by a factor of 1 over d, reflecting it in the x-axis if our c value is negative, reflecting in the y-axis if our d value is negative, shifting our graph k units vertically and h units horizontally. Now, if a point x, y on our original graph corresponds to point x over d plus h, comma cy plus k on our new graph.
Okay, so we have this example given a graph of y equals two to the power of x, sketch a graph of y equals three times two to the power of negative x plus two and determine the intercepts and the equation of the asymptote as well as the domain and range. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is factor this one a bit more because they haven't fully factored this part here. So this really should be y is equal to three times two to the negative of x minus two. Okay, so we'll start by sketching this out. So I'll do a multi-column table of values. So with four different columns. I'll have the original x and y. So at negative two, we're at negative, we're at one quarter. At negative one, we were at one half. Zero, we were at one. One, we were at two. Two, we were at four. And at three, we were at eight. So now we'll apply transformations to those. So our transformations, once again, take the form of x over d plus h. So in this case, we'd have x over our d value, which is, we have this negative here, so over negative one, plus our h value. which in this case would be positive two. And then we have CY plus K. Our C in this case is at three in front. And then we don't have a K value. Okay, so we'll apply these transformations. So we have negative two over negative one would be positive two plus two is four. Next, next we have negative one over negative one, which is one. plus two gives us three. Next, we have zero divided by negative one is zero plus two is two. One divided by negative one is negative one plus two is one. Two divided by negative one is negative two plus two is zero. Three divided by negative one is negative. Three plus two is negative one. So there's our new X values. Now we'll get our new Y values. So we have three times one quarter, so that's three quarters. Three times one half is three over two. Three times one is three. Three times two is six. Three times four is 12. Three times eight is 24. So we'll quote these now. So at four, we are at three quarters. Three, we're at three over two or 1.5. At two, we're at three. One, we're at six. And zero, we're at 12, so off our graph. So our new graph would look something like this. Now in this case, our y-intercept is up here. That's where x is zero, so our y-intercept is at 12. We don't have an x-intercept here. Equation of our asymptote, it's still at y equals zero because we had, did not have a vertical shift. Our domain is once again going to be x is all real numbers. And our range, because we did not shift our graph vertically, will still be y has to be greater than zero. Okay, so we're going to do a word problem. However, based off the situation, we'll use graphing technology for it. 
So for every meter below the surface of the water, the light intensity is reduced by 2.5%. For percent P of light remaining can be given by the equation P equals 100 times 0 0.975 D. Now this equation makes sense because essentially if our D is zero, so our surface, this becomes one and we have 100. So one times 100 is 100 representing, we have 100% of light at the surface. Now 2.5% as a decimal is 0 0.025. So if we take that off of one, because we're decreasing by that, so we still have 97.5% left. That's how we got this. Now we want to graph for a D of 0 to 40. Now, when setting up our graph, I would probably, we want to go for 0 to 40. So therefore, that's our x value. So that's 0 here to 40 here. So our x min will set at 0. Our x max will set at 40. I would also put, we have my y min won't be 0 because we can't go, go below 0%. And I'd have the maximum be 100% because we're never going to have more than 100% visible light intensity. So we'll enter this in our calculator as y is equal to 100 times 0 0.975 to the power of x. Now, when we graph this, we end up with something that looks roughly like this. Now, we want to know how much light remains at 10 meters. For that, we can just enter that into our equation. So we've got y equals 100 times 0 0.975 to a power of 10. And that will give us 77.6%. Now, at what depth is only 50% remaining? What we'll do is we'll add another graph to our existing one. So we'll just create the graph y is equal to 50. What this will do is it will plot a horizontal line at a y value of 50. We then will use our calculator functions to find where these two lines intersect. And we're given this coordinate is 27.4. Comma 50. So our answer for this would be 27.4% of the light is remaining.